What is this? Newsreel film. It shows us winning the war. We didn't win the war. Before we start talking about Amazon's The Man in the High Castle, I have to give full disclosure here. I'm a huge fan of the writings of Philip K. Dick and of alternative history. Now I say that because for all the wonders of a Blade Runner, both have often been mishandled in the past. And having seen some fumblings, to put it gently, in the pilot for High Castle when it went up online on January 15th, I had trepidations about the adaptation of the Nazis and Imperial Japan's petitioned America that lost World War II, which has Blade Runner director Ridley Scott as well as X-Files producer Frank Spottenitz among its EPs. Well, those trepidations have been dissipated. And the espionage-rich 10-episode November 20th debuting first season of Man in the High Castle is a great binge-worthy way to spend a weekend in a world that thankfully never was. A film that shows another world, so what? So it means that maybe the world can change. Besides the never not shocking images of swastikas over Times Square, Jewish persecution, and the bureaucratic banality of evil that pervades everywhere, and it's sometimes far from banal in this series, this is a series that questions not only our sense of history, but what freedom itself means in a world where order is valued over everything else. With young lovers, resistance fighters, TV game shows, betrayal, both personal and national, and a banned film that may show the Allies actually did win the war, the backdrop for High Castle is a drab 1962 on the brink of a new war. The ill health of a still living Adolf Hitler is allowing the barely contained friction between the Japanese Pacific states west of the Rockies and the greater Nazi Reich of the East Coast to start sparking. And in a strong cast with the likes of Alexa Davlos, Rupert Evans, and Luke Kleintank as a man who may not be any of the things he appears to be, a special mention has to go here to Rufus Sewell and Kari Hiroki Takawa. The former is both ruthlessly cold and charmingly sympathetic as the well-named John Smith, one of the leading Nazis in America and just another suburban dad. The latter navigates an equally complex world of his own as a trade minister of the Pacific States who may have his eye on a much bigger picture. Now I know that even the prospect of such a world of that as man in the high castle may be an impediment to some. I get that. But don't let that horror of a world that actually thank God never was turn you away from a damned fine drama that charts its own path. I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood.